Hi, Pip here again with another vlog. Uh, Easter's on its way, um, so we're going to be looking at a wonderful diet called Cottontail, which may not surprise you, is a bunny rabbit. We're also looking at floral wreath and wildflower stems as well, so and some nice techniques using acrylics. Enjoy the video. We're going to start by cutting our cottontail dye. This is a big style, of course, and that means we can cut more heavyweight materials. This is a very, very firm chipboard indeed. Um, but I'm just going to pop that in place onto the die. I want to cut both the bunny and the bow, which comes with this die. So we sandwich between the two plates, as we do with our thinlets, and just run it through the machine without the platform, of course. You don't need a platform when you're using big dies. So there we have it. Remember, it's a very heavyweight material, but using a Biggs, it cuts out perfectly cleanly every single time. I know that I can do that with confidence. And there we are. This is going to be the basis for the rest of our card. Here's our die cut bunny, ready to go. Um, as I said, it's mount board, it's very sturdy, but it's great for applying inks, or as we're doing today, acrylics and gesso. And one of the great things about when you're applying wet things to card or paper, the thicker the better. It doesn't curl, it doesn't distort. Um, now, these deco art acrylics, this is French grey blue. Always give them a good shake beforehand. I'm just going to put a little blob on there. This is going to be my base colour. Now, you'll notice I'm rolling it out with my brayer. And I want to roll this quite thin. Not too thick at all, because I want to get I want to get a streaked effect. I don't want to get full coverage with this. I want some of that base card coming through. So you see, I'm not just going in one direction. I'm moving this back and forth, and that should just about do it. Now, what I can do at this point is take take some kitchen paper and wipe most of this off. You don't need to have it completely clean. When we're working with the next colour, it doesn't really matter with these acrylics. If you get a little bit of one colour transferring into the next, but it's best to get most of the colour off your brayer. Now, next up, I want to put some white gesso. This is indigo blue white gesso. I've been told that it has a very high pigment content, which is why it is such a stunning white. I'm going to use my palette knife just to place some on there. Um, and I like the thickness of this gesso as well. Now with this, not only am I going to apply that white colour, but I'm also going to get a little bit of texture. And see that there going over the grey? That's pretty cool. And all of my other colours, we can see that there, all of my other colours are going to sit beautifully on top of that. Now let's get some of that white off. So at this point, you can use your heat tool if you prefer to make sure this is bone dry, but in truth, it, it dries pretty quickly. It's already dry to the touch there because we are working with relatively thin layers. So now I'm gonna come with two tones of pink. I've got baby pink and Melon, so that's strictly speaking more of a peach, I suppose. But melon's going to be my base colour. There we are, a little blob there again. Always shake it well. So there we are, that's rolled out. And this, as you can see now, again, that white provides a nice base. It's coming through in patches, as is the grey, which is the effect that I'm looking for. And in truth, this, this, would, this would be enough, but I do want to introduce that second colour, this lovely baby pink. We can put it directly over the other one. So there we are, spread that out with the brayer and come in again. There we have it, just in patches, not all over. That's lovely. That's gorgeous. That's, that's exactly, exactly what I was hoping for. And it doesn't always happen, believe you and me. Now, before we move on, I'm going to 
bring in my other die cuts. Now I've used Wildflower Stems number one and two and I've also used lovely floral wreath die. So I'm going to reach over here and bring those die cuts in. Oh, one more. And there's a leaf. So you can see this is the floral wreath or some of the floral wreath dies. These were cut from craft card and this is a flower. I think this one's from Wildflowers 2 and that one from Wildflowers 1. It could be the other way around so we'll have to check that but irrespective of that whichever one you choose they're gorgeous gorgeous sets. There are fly five different stems in each set so plenty to choose from there. Now what I'm going to do with these, I'll set them slightly to one side. This is a colour called Light Buttermilk. It's, um, mm, I suppose, what would you call it? A cream, an ivory? It's gorgeous anyway, whatever you call it. So I'm rolling some of that out and I'm going to bring in these die cuts. Now, you can see I'm not going too heavy. I want some of that craft card coming through. It gives it a more natural look and feel. So. There we are. That's gorgeous. Uh, this this lovely, lovely wreath. Um, this set designed by a very lovely, very talented young lady. The name of Lisa. And finally, my flowers. So I might have to apply a little. Oh no, that's not too bad. That's not too bad. So one last thing. A little bit more gesso. Um, this will give you just a touch of contrast and I'm only using a very very small amount here. So I'll make sure that's all spread. You have to work quickly with this because it does dry quicker than the acrylics. Um, a little bit on there and finally let's get some on our and I know you can't really see the difference, but trust me, it, it, when, when it's all put together, you, you will see exactly what I mean. Now, last thing, I'm hoping I've got enough gesso left. This is, ah, oh, perfect. This is a piece of corrugated card. This is what the bunny is going to sit on, on our card. And that's so, it's quite subtle. It's barely there, in fact. Um, and it's all about judging how much how much gesso you've got left on the roller. If you put too much, it still look great, to be honest with you. But there we are. That's what I was looking for. Here are my die cuts, and the card is almost ready to assemble. Okay, time to uh, bring it all together. I'm going to start off by placing this is this is my base card. This is cut from one of the gorgeous colours in the Sizzix paper pack. And I'm just going to dot some PVA glue just strategically around and in between these leaves before placing it mm, roughly central, probably just slightly to the left of center. I do mean very slightly. So that's in place. That's just going to sit there in the background. You've noticed I, I didn't glue it all over and that's because I do want areas like this to sort of to sit up slightly. I don't want it too flat. Now double sided tape on the back you remember we just applied gesso to our corrugated card and this is going to sit something like that. So that's quite a nice strong contrast between the corrugated and this. Uh, the colour in the background is very subtle but that's fine this is an Easter card so we don't want to go crazy and use really strong colours. Now our floral die cuts to which we applied the gesso um, I'm going to use uh, a stylus from my Sizzix paper sculpting kit just to give them a little more dimension for when they sit on the card. Makes them far more interesting. Uh, this kit is wonderful if 3D flowers are your thing or you just want to form your die cuts it's absolutely ideal. There we are and we'll curl that leaf there. That's it. Now again to get the dimension we want to take 
some twine, we'll take a button, we'll take... I want to take some 3D foam pads. Um, it's always nice, of course, when you, when you start adding dimension to a car, we have the problem of postage. As we know, the post office do not like thick cards. So these cards are the, probably the best sort, a sort to be hand-delivered rather than sent through the post, unless you want to incur the cost, or, worst case scenario, your friend at the other end incurs the cost. They're sure they wouldn't appreciate that as much as they would love your card. So we've got a pearl gem just sitting in the middle of that flower, like so. Before the finishing touch, which is the leaf. I always put the leaves on last. Depends where I where I want to put my flower. And there, that one just sits underneath. And that that curling that we did, that is giving it that dimension. That's and we're going to let light and shade do its thing with this one. Now, a bunny rabbit. Remember our bunny and die cuts. I'm going to use. I'm going to bring my glue gun in for this. I think we're going to. Now, I was very tempted to actually use some distress ink around the edges of this this bunny rabbit but I want to leave I want it to be quite subtle I don't want it to be over the top there's there's something about Easter makes which I want to which uh, makes me use more muted color palettes um, we'll place our bunny just about there. Now that, that's gorgeous by itself, but we're going to add these die-cut florals, remember, from the wildflower set one and two. Wildflower stems, I should say. So I'm going to apply these with a little bit of, a little bit of PVA. Uh, the first one, I'm going to sit up there. Isn't that gorgeous? Don't don't worry about if these if these actually come over the edge because we're going to trim them away as needs be. Uh, a bit more glue there. Now, when we've used the the brayer on these uh, and we've applied our gesso or acrylic, as the case may be, they've got a nice natural curl to them. So I'm just going to leave that where it is, and that's why again I'm not applying the glue all over. There we are, we'll have that one sitting something like that. Now, obviously they have come off the edge, so I'm just going to take my scissors and make a few strategic snips. And finally the base of that one. So that's all good. Now, next up, I'm going to take my button. I've threaded this with the natural hemp twine. And I'm going to place that over the top there. I've just left those bits of twine coming out. Now, last but not least, I'll take this. This I actually printed off. If, if you choose to stamp it, that's fine. If you have a stamp which suits your purpose. The scissors, incidentally, are from the Sizzix paper sculpting kit, again. So I'm going to snip that to shape. It, doesn't have to be perfect. As I, as I always say, imperfection is preferred in some cases, this being one of them. Now, there's the Easter, and, and that nice contrast, that nice cream as well against that color. So again, it's quite subtle, but you do need that contrast to get these elements. There's a lot of elements going on here, and it's it's a real it's a real skill to juggle and balance different textures, different colors, different different elements to get your composition where you want it. Shall I put it slightly? Mm, nope. I'm I'm deciding. I'm going to put it like that. And, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, that's it. Um, that's our card. Lovely. Um, you can see you can see the different layers of color there. It's far more interesting than just having one block color, and there is a little bit of texture as well, but it makes it look look natural. Um, and I, I love, especially with Easter again, I, I love those natural textures. Now, look at the same similar sort of elements, same dies. Um, okay, obviously that's a die cut circle. This is actually a, a fabric. So the fabric has been applied to the mount board, then die cut, and then I've used a pen. 
I've used a 0.1 millimeter pen to go around the edges in a jerky kind of motion so it looks like a, a faux um, stitched effect. So similar sort of composition, uh, similar kind of colors. This time I've gone for gray and cream, but always stunning results. There. Well, thanks very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, it, it's a great dye. Well, they're all great dyes, actually. But if you want to learn more about them or you want any more inspiration, then simply go across to sysics.co.uk. Check out the blogs and vlogs from some wonderful designers. There's jam-packed with inspiration and information in equal measure. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon. Bye.